Okay, so if you find it, that's great. I'm currently, yeah, so. Okay, so whenever you get it, or if you get a, uh, um, yeah, I have it so you can share it, or if you have, just haven't find it. It's not letting me pull it up. Okay. It's not letting you? Yeah, it's not letting me. Mm -mm. Let me see if I can go through modules, but it's not letting me mm -mm. pull it up on the first page. <clears throat> I love it when this happens. Yeah, it's saying I submitted already. One second. And of course, my computer collection connection is really slow. Uh, not the calendar. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. Now, let me see. Like I said, you can go ahead and share a screen if you need to, or if it's easier. Okay, I'll just share it. Uh, so I'm... Okay, can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, so you have it. Yeah. So you have kilograms per dollar. Kilogram, dollars per kilogram, kilograms per dollar. Okay, so there's actually an easy way to do this. <clears throat> so this would be uh, one hundred dollar fifty seven to one point five seven over one, right? Yeah. So if you were doing, that's dollars and kilograms. So if you do it the opposite way, it's one over 1.57, right? Yeah. So what you do is you just go in and on a calculator do one divided by 1.57. Okay. So one divided by 1.57, right? Yep. It's like decimal in six, three, six, nine, four continuation of numbers. But it's uh, like round to the nearest hundred. It shouldn't be. It should be. How'd you get that? Unless I did it wrong, like instead of one divided by 1.57. I got 0.6369426. Yeah. 0.6369. Nine and then it's like four two six seven five yeah. two. So you need to do it to the nearest okay. hundredth, which is the second decimal. Okay. So basically, is that six? Is it greater than or less or less than five? 
it's greater it's greater than so but the behind it is not but does it matter so you no. raise the, you raise that the, the second six sorry because the first one is a tenth the second one is a hundredth so to round to the nearest hundredth you look at the thousandths with which is the second six So that rounds up to seven. No, 0. 0.64. Okay, six, four. Okay, oh, I get it now. You got it? Yeah, thank you. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Okay, also guys, on your test, make sure, and there's a very, very good reason that you upload your work when you're done. And the reason for that is if you do, badly on the test you're going to see your grade and kind of freak out what i'm going to do unless somebody would ask specifically to do it regardless of your grade <clears throat> is i'm going to take and if you do get below the threshold for passing the class which is like what 50 ish percent but i'll do it under 60 percent i'm going to go into your work and give partial credit based on what you're doing okay make sure you upload your work so you your grade that you see on wednesday may not be your final grade don't despair let me do the grading i need to do okay uh what other questions do we have Because I know you guys are not, you're not STEM, you're not math majors. Most of you will try your best to never have to do math again after this. And I'm aware of that. <clears throat> we have to do the work. We have to go through this, but I, I still need to see what you're doing. I need to make sure that you're doing things in a specific order, in a specific way. And if so, then we can we can address that going forward, but we need to make sure that you're doing it in a, in a way that you're supposed to get the answer. So if you're always making the same mistake and everything before and after it is correct, then you will get partial points and that will help your grade. Um, so what- I think with math, a lot of us, I think a lot of us overthink it because I'm one of them who overthink math too much. I. Yeah. I that, second guessed myself so much, and I was like, I could have got this right, and then I was like, oh my god, I, I had the first answer right. Yeah, um, and that that happens, and that's why if you write the work down, and I see the first answer was right, I'm like, you had that right, and I'd be more likely to give you all a partial to all credit because you had it right. Okay, um, I actually have. Uh, yeah. I actually wanted. To, um like four questions on the review okay the question um question two um let's we'll start with that one please okay let me get it up that's there's a review question two you said yeah as i'm waiting for mower to work <clears throat> so this is on the miles uh the, the tank of gas question right yeah that one yeah okay so let me do share screen whiteboard so the question is specifically um i know it randomizes it for each one so i don't mind so you can drive uh, 350 miles on a tank of, of 23 gallons. So that's what is given. You could drive 350 miles on a tank of 23 gallons. So they have two questions. How far can it drive on 49 gallons? And how many gallons 
are needed to drive 1,390 390 miles. And both of these need the same information. <clears throat> so we have to find out how many, uh, oops, if I do 350 miles, I need to find out how many miles per gallon. So if we have 350 miles on 23 gallons, what we need to do is essentially divide them. So this is what a lot of people do, at least what I use, I do a lot. Um, when you're trying to calculate how your, your efficiency in a car. <clears throat> uh, so this happens a lot before computers pretty much took over vehicles. Um, so all you have to do is just divide that 350 uh, divided by 23 to get your miles per gallon. So 15 point uh, 217 miles per gallon. So what it's asking at this point, and there's two questions, how far can it drone drive? Ugh, I apparently haven't had enough coffee on 49 gallons. So we could set that one up. Copy. Paste. Right here. So we have 15.217 miles for one gallon, and we have 49 gallons. So we wanna make sure we put the gallons opposite each other, top and bottom. So like this, gallons on the pot, bottom, gallons on the top, <clears throat> so that we can cancel each other out. So at that point, we just take the 49 times 15.217. which would give us 745.65 miles. So that's how we figure out how many miles we can drive based on a specific amount of gallons if we know the efficiency. The other one, the how many gallons to drive 13, 1,390 miles. I did this when I was moving from Illinois to Phoenix to Phoenix back to Illinois because it's me. Uh, to do this, it's very useful when you budget, by the way, although you want to add 10%, but that's beside the point. So we have our base efficiency of 15.217 miles per one gallon. Uh, so if you're actually planning a trip, you could look at your overall efficiency, which should be on your computer if you have a decently new car, and it will tell you what your general efficiency is for your vehicle. It could be less, it could be greater, depends on what you're doing. And we have miles. Well, since we have miles, we have to put that on the bottom. So at this point, we do the same thing where we want to cancel things out. There. And what we could do, and this is kind of weirdly counterintuitive, but go with me. You take 15.217 divided by 1390. So 15.217 divided by 1390. I'm oh, sorry. It's like you could do this where 217 divided by 1390 and get 0 0.010947 as a number. 
The easier things to do, however, is to flip it. Because what you would have to do at this point is you would have to over here, take the inverse of this. And you could do that. So the idea is it's one over 0 0.010947, which would be 91 gallons, 91.35 gallons. <clears throat> so you could do that. If you don't want to, and I don't blame you, which you could do, one gallon is you flip it over here when you have it as a fraction. And that's okay. You're doing the same thing you did over here, but you're doing it at the very beginning. And then instead of putting the miles on the bottom, 1390 miles, you're doing it on top. So the miles cancel out again, and you're still taking 1390 divided by 15.27, but before you did 15.217 divided by 1390. You're just changing the order. That's the only thing you're doing. It's all the same math. 1390 divided by 15.217, 91.35. So you'd have to do 91.35 gallons to drive 1,390 miles. Does that more or less make sense? Yeah, that, just, that makes sense. Thank you. I, I was just confused that we had to use like, um, yeah, sort of like, like an example, like the one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. I thought we'd have to do it that way. Yeah. Like you're and, using another formula. Uh, yeah, uh, and on this, you could kind of have guessed it somewhat because you had 745 miles for 49 gallons. Well, I'm roughly doubling my miles, so I'm going to roughly double my gallons. So it's going to be about 90 to 100 gallons. Okay. So that way you know you're in the ballpark or if you're doing math wrong. Okay. You could have also... I wanted help with... Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, um, with question 16, if we can go over that one next. Okay, let me save this in case. Clear. So 16 is, oh, it's a field. Let me draw. We have a rectangular field that is 15 yards. by 66 feet. I did that wrong. Okay. So we have 15 yards and we have 66 feet. And they want you to know area in square feet and area in square yards. So the thing you need to know on this is that three feet equals one yard. So what we could do, because we have to do both of them, is we had to convert 66 feet to one yard over three feet, which would give us, draw here, so we can cancel out the feet part, and then 66 divided by three, which would be 22 yards. So this would also be 22 yards. Uh, 
Uh, at the same time, we can convert 15 yards. So that's three feet per one yard like that. And then we can cancel out yards and yard. So 15 times three is 45. So this would be 45 feet. So area for feet is length times width. So that's 45 times 66, which is 2,970 square feet or for yards. So that's 15 times 22, which is 330 yard square yards. Which you could also do if you wanted to, it's 100% up to you. I don't care if you do this way or the other way. Is, uh, let's see, nine square feet is equal to one square yard. So you could have two thousand nine hundred and seventy divided by nine is going to be equal to three hundred thirty square yards, or three hundred thirty square yards times nine is equal to two thousand nine hundred seventy square feet. <clears throat> Both of those would have worked. It's up to you which one you want to do, which one's easiest. Is that good? Yeah, got it. Thank you. And did you have another one? Um, yeah, the last the last two, um, I'd like to go for 31 and 32. 31. And that's all I have. 31. Oh, sales tax. Okay. Here. This one, sales tax in Washington was 8.4%. So you could buy a car for $5,700. So what's sales tax? on a $700 car. And the follow-up to that is, what is the final price? So to do this, to find sales tax, it's always, uh, sorry, the tax amount is equal to the price times the tax. Uh, the tax in percentage uh, is actually a decimal uh, where you divide by 100. So what we're doing is we're taking that 8.4% and dividing it by 100. So 8.4 divided by 100 is 0 0.084. So that's what we're applying to this formula right here. So our price is 5,700. Our tax is 0 0.84. And that gives us a total of $478.80. Let me put in dollar signs. So that is the tax right here. So that's the amount of sales tax. The total cost, you can do this two ways. 
you could do original price or the price plus tax, and that's equal to the total price. Or you do the price times, mm, that's annoying. And my board went away. That's even more annoying. Uh, resume share. And my board went away. Oh well, let's let's catch up real quick. So sales tax is eight point four percent. You divide by a hundred to get decimal. So 8.4 divided by 100 is 0 0.084. Uh, to calculate tax, you take price times tax. So 5700 times 5, so you have 5700 times 0 0.084 is equal to 478.80. Uh, okay, so the total price is, you could do two ways. You could do uh, price plus tax equals total price. So that would be 5,700 plus 478.80 equals Six thousand one hundred seventy-eight dollars and eighty cents. <clears throat> Another way you could do it, especially if they didn't ask for this middle step, would be to take price times one plus tax, and that's your total price. So that'd be fifty-seven hundred times one point zero eight four, which would give you the same. price for the car after tax. And that's number 31. So for 32, <clears throat> we have a station in uh, Mauna Lao in Hawaii that does CO2 levels since 1959. Uh, at the time they were uh, 1959, uh, had 239, parts per million, uh, if I could type CO2. Uh, in 2005, we had 382 parts per million CO2. Um, so we need to find out two things, how much it rose, and the percent that it rose. So the, the amount that it rose is pretty easy. Uh, that's nothing more than uh, final minus initial. So we have our final amount, which is 385. And we had our initial at 339. So 385 minus 339 is 46. So we rose 46 parts per million. So <clears throat> that's the basic amount that we rose in order to have our current uh, CO2 levels. To find out the percent that we rose, which the final minus initial divided by initial. So what we end up doing is we take the value that we had from the previous one, that's 46 parts per million. And we divide it by what we started with, which was 339 parts per million, which would give us divided by 339, a decimal. 0.1356932. So they want this as a percentage and to the nearest tenth of a percentage. So to turn a decimal to a percentage, 
you multiply by 100. So this times 100 is equal to 13.56932. <clears throat> so they went into the nearest tenth of a percent, which is, do, do, did not want that, I wanted this. Uh, opposite direction, of course. That one right there. So we're going to look at that right there. So this is over five or five or more. So we increase the tenth place, which gives us a thirteen point six percent increase in CO two. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. It's just like, since there's so much words in the sentence, that's what got me confused. So, yeah, got it. Uh, so one of the things, whenever there's a bunch of words, whenever, okay, so the yeah. first thing I do, this is gonna sound completely backwards. When there's tons of words and you're starting to get overloaded, look at what answer they want okay okay so because i saw you when i started reading it i saw years and i saw parts per million all right so there's two basic things that it could be from that point it could either be what we did which was the the increase in the percentages right or it could have been a so, so we could have had that. We could have had have increase and in percentages, or we could have done a linear formula. Those are the two things that we have done that we could have done with this data. They asked for what you wanted to get done, so they wanted to know the percentage. The second that they said percentages. Stop looking or thinking about dates. Write down the numbers and go. Okay. It's it seems kind of counterproductive and counter of uh, everyone has ever told you to do about word problems. I only want you to look at what they want, then go back in and only get the information that they want out. I don't want you to read the whole thing. Because guess what? Most of the time, okay. they, they won't put numbers in. They won't do it as letter uh, words. Like they won't write out 382. Okay. And you can see in the question okay, I had parts of million. <clears throat> so so don't don't overthink it. And like I said, and I still mean it on the test, if you need to ask me a question, you can ask me a question, okay? I'm not gonna tell you the answer, but I will tell you the question. I will ask another question for your question. Okay, okay got it. Thank you so much. Yep, uh, other questions we got. Um, let me go look and see if anyone put anything in the discussion. Did I put that up top? Number 
Uh, really quick looking at the discussion questions. Um, yes, you can use your notes. And uh, organi organizing notes is such a difficult question because everyone does notes differently. I personally like having each type of questions written out and then annotate what I'm doing at each particular point, especially on the more annoying questions. And I know I haven't modeled that that good towards the end. I'll try and model it more if we get any out here. <clears throat> oh, this is the actual exam. <laughs> no, that won't help you. Come on. Okay, so you wonderful thing. Stop moving around. Company wants to decrease their energy bill by 18%. If their electricity bill is 2300 a month, what will it be if they succeed? So, so they want to decrease energy bill by 18%. Their bill is 2300 a month. So if they're successful, So the easiest way to do this, and I always say this because I always like doing the easy math first and the hard math second. I don't like doing the hard math first and the easy math second because you're gonna do errors. If they want to decrease by 18%, that means they want to pay 82%. Okay, this is the easiest way to say it. They don't, they want to pay 82% of what they're currently paying. And I found this by doing 100 minus 8 minus 18, which is 82. Okay, so first thing I do is convert to percent or decimal, uh, divide by 100. So 82 divided by 100 is 0 0.82, two. So then we take 2,300. So we have the cost times one to pay equals hopeful amount. <clears throat> so our cost is 2,300 and we're trying to pay 82% of that, so that gives us a total of $1,886. So that or below is an 18% reduction. Since they, the next bill was 1932, they did not succeed. So real quick, even if you didn't get this part right, but you wanna check the next part, what you could do is you could take your final minus your initial over your initial, and it should give you your cost. So they had, 1932 minus 2300 over 2300. 
32 minus 2300 divided by 2300. So they actually increased it by negative 0 0.16 or 16%. So they got close, but they didn't quite get there. So no, it was not a success. So this is okay for figuring it out. If you just calculate, it has to be that or below, or do it this way if you're not sure. Both will work to get the answer. Yeah, more, anybody else have more questions? Um, so if no one has any more questions, I will be around <clears throat> tomorrow more than today. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, as they do their work, uh, I will make sure that everyone can take this test. Okay. So try your best on the review, try to get it there on your own, but everyone will be taking the test tomorrow on Wednesday. Remember, let right, me we'll go ahead and stop sharing go ahead and stop recording